We're here today with Wharton Senior Fellow Chandra Hill to talk about her new research, which focuses on TV ads, online search, and the connections between them. Chandra, thank you for being here today. Thank you for having me. First of all, could you give us a short description of what you looked at in this research? Absolutely. So what we aim to achieve is to find new ways to measure TV ad effectiveness. So let me take a step back and kind of talk a little bit about how people typically measure effectiveness. Mm -hmm. um, large brand advertisers will usually ask another company to survey consumers and ask them questions like, did you see the ad? Would you like to recommend the product that was advertised to your friends? Um, how did you feel about the ad? So questions about their attitudes. They might also look at sales data and correlate that with the amount of spend that they've made. What we hope to do is look at more granular data that reveals itself in the searches people post on um, large search engines. And so what we're hoping to do, or have done, um, is link TV ad data at aggregate level where they you know, can tell us precisely which television show, what time, which locations an ad was shown. And then we look at search data around that TV ad before and after to see whether there was an impact on the search behavior. And what we're actually um, trying to do is look at the ability to coordinate advertising efforts, so not just on television, but also on digital platforms like sponsored search. So what we do is combine data from TV ads, so the location of those ads, so where they were shown, not just the location in terms of geography, but also which shows they were shown in. And then we link that to the search data, not just the searches, but also conditioned on somebody making a search, did they click on a sponsored search ad or not? And we combine data from all of these sources to make causal claims about the impact of TV ads on digital behaviors towards measuring the effectiveness of TV ads. So this research kind of capitalizes on a phenomenon that it's grown in the last couple of years called second screening in that no longer do we watch TV and just look at the TV, but often we're sitting on the couch looking at the TV and then also scrolling through our phones the whole time. So tell me, like, when you looked at this a little more closely, what were some of the key takeaways that you found? Um, so first of all, that's a great observation. And I should probably take a step back and tell you the research questions that we were interested in. So the number one research question we're interested in is just that, like, how does... Um, uh, behaviors in response to TV ad manifest themselves via these second screens. And what we found was that the response that we were seeing, so we do in fact see that there's an increase in search behavior after a TV ad is shown, but that's manifesting itself primarily on smartphones. So the smaller the device, the more likely someone is to respond directly after a TV ad um, digitally. Um, and we also were interested in, because we have very granular level search data, not just in um, you know whether people are searching more, but as I mentioned, this interaction with the sponsored search ads. And then finally, we wanted to look at how um, the TV ads impacted different users um, in various ways. So for instance, we're interested in heterogeneous effects on demographics, so age and gender. So do certain genders respond differently to a particular creative that's shown in a particular television show? Um, similarly, we looked at device, and that's how we were able to discern that the response was coming primarily from the mobile phone so what were some of the findings that were most surprising to you? I know one thing that I kind of stood out to me is this idea that you found that really when people are, when this increase in searching on your phone is going on, it's basically only amounts to about three minutes. That's right. So you hit the nail on the head in terms of the three surprising, I mean, well, the surprising findings. So there were two that um, I think are obvious in hindsight, but we didn't necessarily anticipate. So the first one was one that we already talked about. By disaggregating the data and looking at um, different cohorts, so people searching from smartphones versus tablets versus PCs, we were able to see that the significant effect in terms of the bounce in searches after a TV ad was happening only on mobile phones, right? So that's the first thing that was surprising to us, although in hindsight it makes sense, right? If you're sitting in front of the television, you're not going to bring your desktop to, you know, Probably watch not. television, right? And then the second one was because we're looking at very fine-grained windows, so really for the first time are we doing this sort of granular response to TV ads, minute by minute we were able to see the dynamic change in how people search after a TV ad, and as you mentioned, we 
we found that really we're seeing it either in the first, second, or third uh, minute after the TV ad. And at first, we're like, wow, we expected this thing to sort of slow down, but maybe tail off. And the reason is, we suspect, is that TV ad segments are almost always exactly three minutes. Mm -hmm. And so people are probably switching their attention back to the television show after the TV, is ad TV ads are aired. So if I am an advertiser, you're looking at, you have this three-minute window, people are on their phones, they're looking at these ads, what can, I, what can I do with this information? How can I use this and maybe synchronize? First of all, are people even synchronizing now with the, in this way, like trying to make sure if someone sees an ad on TV, they may also see it on mobile? And if not, what can I do to kind of capitalize on this information that you find? Right. So um, the implications of our work, I think, are many, right? So the first one is that because we're finding that the search response to television ads is manifesting itself primarily on mobile phones. And from prior research, not ours, we know that um, people are more likely to click on the first ad only on a mobile phone when compared to, say, a PC or desktop. And that's primarily because of the footprint, right? So you only see the first ad. So what that suggests is if people really are moving to mobile phone when they're watching television, that if you're an advertiser and you really want to keep their attention, you should spend the money to make sure you're the first ad that shows up for um, the advertiser. So that's the first one. But then I think... Um, the work has even broader implications. So because we can see who is responding, right? So let's just say, let's take two examples. Let's say you have only one ad creative, like one TV ad, one commercial. Um, and you want to know sort of for this, let's say it's a new product, who's responding. You can launch that TV ad and basically, you know, look at the response in the way that we have and see which types of customers are responding and where, like which geographies are responding. And that can help you sort of optimize your other um, your other advertising efforts to do more here or less there, depending upon what you find. The other example I wanted to point out is if instead you have many ad creatives, and you don't know in advance, like maybe you've done some focus tests and you know which one small groups like, but you don't know in advance um, what the broader audience will respond best to, you can launch all four of those or however many ads and see who is responding the best and then you know adjust how you present those ads over time. So what this approach allows for is to do near real-time optimization of ads with very aggregate level data. Now you asked the question of like, what are people doing now, right? So for the most part, people are measuring advertising effectiveness in the ways that I mentioned when we first started. So asking um, you know, people via surveys, did they see the ad or looking at sales data? But the future is quite different in that now there are solutions for um, TV networks and, and even uh, sort of solutions that sit outside of TV networks that allow people to buy advertisement programmatically. So right now, we're not all the way there. So there's going to be programmatic um, buys that more advertisers will do, as well as something called addressable TV, where people can actually advertise to individual households that they know information, right? So if you could do that, then looking at this aggregate level data kind of is unnecessary. Mm -hmm. But until we get there, this way is a good way to begin to optimize campaigns. Right. This sort of is a beginning of saying that my Pretty Little Liars crowd is maybe a little different than my Scandal crowd, right. which is maybe different than my Monday Night Football crowd. Exactly. Now, speaking of that, what were there some interesting things that you found in terms of demographic differences and how people reacted to this? We did, and that was one thing that we thought would be most interested to advertisers. So because you can see who's responding with respect to, um, we looked at really just age and gender, but still that's enough to give an advertiser insights. We could match the demographics of the TV show. For instance, if you look at sporting events, those tend to skew male, and then ask when an advertisement is shown in a sporting event, who what audience members are most likely to respond? And we found, perhaps obviously in hindsight, that when a TV ad is shown in um, a sporting event, men are much more likely to respond to it than when an ad is shown in a sporting event. Women really don't respond more than they would otherwise. So the idea is maybe that your ads, the, the audience you might want to go after with these ads are the people that are already going to be watching anyway, which I assume they know, but then also that it 
transfers over to online searches as well. That's right. And so, and you can just check, right? So two things, right? So one, you can check that the people that you're targeting are actually the ones responding. So that's kind of like a validity check that your, your strategy is a good one. But then in addition to that, if you have two types of shows that, um, let's just say men, because we use that example, are likely to watch, you can compare and see like, which type of show, when an ad is placed in it, are men most likely to respond to that ad? Because there could be all kinds of things going on. Perhaps in some shows, people um, are more engaged with the show and are less likely to turn away from the commercials, for instance, um, or you know, get up and maybe they're a longer show and they get up and do other things. So you can look at the match between the type of show and the audience that's responding, and it has two implications. Now, does this research play into also the idea that more and more people are maybe turning away from broadcast TV and going more towards streaming, for example? Because, I mean, I know when I watch Hulu, for example, because I have the kind where you do get ads with it, is that it's asking me, do I want the experience of this? Or do I want, you know, do I want to learn about, do I want a travel video about California? Or do I want something about a cleaner? I mean, can this also be applied to other, like, beyond broadcast TV? So it can be applied to other... Um, advertising strategies where you have a specific time um, stamp associated with the event. So um, that could be, you know, sort of placing a billboard in a particular location and then taking it away. Could it be a, you have a radio advertisement and it has a certain time. So the type of methodology that we actually advocate for is one that allows us to tease out the causality between an event that has a specific time and behavior that happens, you know, after that event by comparing it not only to what happened before but also to some control group that we come up with. But um, so any event uh, based advertising, it would work. But to answer your question about Hulu and, um, let's say, Netflix, those so those solutions for sort of media consumption are, are a little bit different in that they know who you are, right? Like, sure. they have your they account watching. information. So what they can do is closer to the addressable television um, example that I mentioned earlier, where people can sort of now advertise directly to individual households. So companies like Hulu and Netflix have the ability already to do sort of one-to-one -one advertising, and they can use your, your behavior either on their own site or by matching their data with third parties to target to you directly. Now, what is there, uh, I guess, what sets this research apart from other research that's been conducted on this topic? So there are a few things that set it apart, right? So the one thing is the granularity of the data. So because of the scale of the data, we were able to look at minute-by-minute -minute response by different locations. Um, so that's one thing. The second thing is that for these searchers, we also have, as I mentioned, demographics, very crude, high-level demographics, but we were able to then look at these heterogeneous treatment effects at, for demographics and then also by device type, which no one's done before. And then finally, this combination between not just looking at search response, but looking at the clicks, so conditioned on a search, looking at the sponsored ad clicks, is something that's also novel. So looking at how firms might begin to coordinate their advertising efforts is something that hasn't yet been done before when looking at response to TV ads. Mm -hmm. And what's next for this research? I know you've done a lot with social TV in the past couple of years, but where, where are you going to go with this next? So there are a number of sort of obvious extensions. So we want to, well, and we are have already started to bring in uh, just organic search. So we focused in the first paper on sponsored search, and we can look at, well, you know, when an organic search response actually is for the brand or not, like, does that make a difference in their likelihood to click after an ad? Um, and we're also looking at other types of digital responses, not just search. So we're looking at clicks on web pages associated with the brand, and also looking at um, where people are coming in from when they make those clicks, asking questions around which specific advertising platforms might be most effective right after a TV ad campaign. Um, and now, after sort of those things that we're already working on, what we plan to look at are um, assigning people 
to different categories. So instead of, think of it, instead of assigning them to demographics like male or female, we assign them to a place on the purchase funnel. So are they ready to buy? Are they just seeking information? Are they doing comparison shopping? And we want to know whether the TV ad is more or less effective depending upon where people are in that uh, purchase funnel. Um, other things that we'd like to do but will you know, need some convincing for a partner are we have used observational data techniques, and we feel pretty strongly that our method for teasing out the causality, um, the, relation, the causal relationship between the TV ads and the search response um, is pretty solid. However, what we'd really like to do is run an experiment while TV ads are running to make sure that what we're finding for this, with the sponsored search results, are, it's really true, that in fact, there is the impact on sponsored search results that we're seeing. And I guess the pie in the sky, um, you know, kind of future work would be to actually run experiments using addressable TV, right? So our work, I think, will last for quite a while because although addressable TV exists today, they're not um, that many advertisers that have adopted right away. But what we want to see, again, is whether these different combinations of advertising um, lead to sort of more or less um, spend, more or less clicks, more or less search for information. And in using addressable TV solutions in combination with um, experiments on sponsored search, you can get um, precisely at that answer. Chandra, thanks so much for being with us today. Thanks, Rachel.